now. Send. Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. We got news, more bank news, and now I can say the name. And the reason why is because I did a video this morning about a subscriber that has a buddy that is does high level loans in a bank. And they were talking about issues. The subscriber shared some things that he has been learning on my channel and some other channels. And it is William. And William says, no problem. You can uh, say this, throw me a shout out. And I said, so here we go. Shout out for William for this information. And the reason why I'm going to talk about Citizens Bank right now is because we don't want to incite panic, but we're going to talk about different banks. And I dove into uh, this bank way more than if you haven't seen the video I did this morning, go check it out. It has to do with a, a lender. We're talking a gentleman that does massive loans, like the $250 million range, right? And, and there's so few loans that they're getting now. Uh, all of the lenders are at this bank are having a hard time getting commercial loans out there. So the less loans, less mortgages they make, the less money they bring in, all right? Now check this out. I learned some really neat stuff since this morning. Now, first off, we're gonna go over some recent news about the bank. This is one of the banks that has been threatened to be downgraded, by the way, all right? Now, I'm gonna, at the end of this video, I'll put a link to the first video I did this morning if you wanna look at that information. But check this out, the CFPB action right here. Um, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau action to require Citizens Bank to pay $9 million penalty for unlawful credit card servicing. This is from May, in the middle of when everything was going on with the crisis, all right? Now, I've got a lot of stories, a lot of different topics about Citizens Bank to talk about. But it says here, today, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or the CFPB, reached a settlement to resolve allegations that Citizens Bank violated consumer financial protection laws and rules that protect individuals when they dispute credit card transactions. The CFPB alleges that Citizens Bank failed to properly manage and respond to customers' credit card disputes and fraud claims. It entered by the court, if entered by the court, the order, among other things, would require Citizens Bank to pay a $9 million civil penalty. Now, so that's not that big of a deal, right? You go, this is a big bank. We're talking a big bank, and we're gonna talk about their stock and what's happened in a second. That's nothing. Well, that's one thing. So let's look a little bit deeper. This is out of the sun. Uh, and this is from uh, September 5th, 2023. Just came out, right? Bye Bye Citizens Bank with over 1,200 locations set to close down two more branches and customers must take make necessary changes. Now this just came out, this news today. Both branches are located just outside of Pittsburgh and one is at 495 Lincoln, and the other is at 8905 McKnight Road. The latter is located within a Giant Eagle supermarket. Remember, we've talked about this before, um, where we're gonna start seeing, I believe, because of pressures from supermarkets going out of business, and I'm not saying this one is, we're gonna see more of these branches close that are in supermarkets. And we'll be the 14th in-store branch to close this year. All right, so we're not talking about just two, we're, we're gaining more of these. And this is the 14th in a grocery store branch to close this year. So you're seeing a trend here, which means less branches, which is harder for you to deal with people when you need to do your banking. So very important when you're picking a bank, all right? The last day of business is gonna be November 29th, but customers will still be able to take advantage of some of the bank services. In its place, citizens will be installing a virtual assistance branch via an interactive teller machine kiosk. Again, we're going away from branches with humans and we're going to robots. We got to realize that. Again, to everyone that thinks that AI is not taking your business, if AI is not taking it, technology is taking it. I, I just don't know how, how to explain that to people. Meanwhile, in Bellevue, this uh, Bellevue store is closing on November 15th and the drive of ATMs will be maintained so, so customers can still take advantage of some of the services. Uh, customers of this branch can go to the Eagle Giant location on Camp Road. Okay, so these are just two, but it's it's a growing trend of this bank closing down branches. All right, so we're getting fined by the feds, right? We're closing down branches. All right, so let's keep going here. So this is a real sad thing. It says, welcome Stacy Brantley. Now, Stacy became the CEO of Citizens Bank 
right smack dab in the middle of this uh, bank fiasco in the springtime. Well, actually, we're right before February 7th, 2023. So it was actually a little before really all these banks started getting smacked upside the head and banks were closing. So Stacy has got one heck of a a load to carry. And I wouldn't be surprised if Stacy's watching this video actually uh, himself. But it says right here, uh, the new chief executive officer came in, uh, Stacy Brantley, this bank, Citizens Bank, February 7th of 2023. So we got a, a, a top heavy shakeup right now. We got, you know, they uh, swapped out the CEOs. Don't know why the last one left. Here's another story. Citizens Bank. Now, if you go back to my first video, they touch on this. Citizens Bank, this was dated March 2nd. I'm sorry, May 2nd. Citizens Bank Citizens' failed bid for First Republic would have doubled the province bank size. And this story talks about analysts say Citizens Financial Group failed bid over the weekend to acquire First Republic Bank shows the Providence Bank-based bank is looking to expand its national footprint. Now, of course, who wouldn't want to expand its footprint when you could buy assets for pennies on the dollar when the banks, the other banks are collapsing, right? Citizens was one of several banks that sought to buy First Republic from the Federal Deposit Insurance Company, a Corporation, according to media reports. The FDIC announced the failed bank's sale to J.P. Morgan Chase early Monday morning. Now, let me stop there and say that uh, multiple banks were able to bid on these, but also multiple banks were able to slice and dice up these assets. Uh, not every bank wanted to come in and buy up the entire thing. Some banks only wanted to buy partial assets of uh, First Republic. In the video I did this morning, uh, all the names have been redacted, but a memo coming from the top brass of citizens, uh, an email to its employees trying to really rally the troops, really keep everyone motivated and don't quit, um, based on people's frustration levels because they're having a hard time get, getting – people to take out loans, especially these massive uh, commercial loans, right? The commercial mortgage-backed securities uh, industry is imploding right now. It is This is the reason, one of the main drivers of these banks failing, right? If you add on to that, bonds, if held to maturity under a lot of these portfolios are collapsing in value, that means they have less tier one assets to be able to go out and make more loans if they can go and get those. So they have to go and look for collateral, liquidity. It's very, very important that people understand how big of a deal this is right now. And it says here that a spokesperson for Citizens Financial would not comment specifically on the attempted acquisition, but said, we have a responsibility to our shareholders to explore possibilities that would make strategic sense for the company. Now, this story came out a while ago, right? In May 2nd, right in the middle of all of the banking turmoil and, and you have a new CEO in, in charge. But in the memo, they talk about the assets that they did purchase from First Republic, and it set them sort of ahead or in a, in a positive light. He was using that information to try and uh, get his employees excited. So it looks like they may have picked some of that up. And I'm sure with a little bit more digging, I could find out what they bought. Um, now, check this out. This is all out of Reuters, and this is entitled, this is uh, August 8th. This is when Moody's came out and said, we're going to be downgrading, uh, major U.S. banks downgraded and worsening the outlook and then giving a list of banks that are on the warning list. And if you look right here, um, oh, let's see here, hold on. Yeah, right down here at the bottom, Citizens Financial Corp, uh, ticker CFG.N, Right here, affirmed senior unsecured at BAA1, and it was changed to negative from stable. So they hit the downgrade. This is the action by Moody's. They were changed to negative from stable. And people need to realize how big of a deal that is. Let's see how big of a deal it is. Okay, so this is the past six months stock chart right here for the company. As you can see, currently the share price is sitting at $28.57. In the last six months, it has lost a third of its value, 29.87%. Now, what happens when a bank's shares go down like that? Well, investor lose, investors lose confidence. They get worried. They exit. You have more sellers than buyers. You also have a situation when the bank is trying to raise money and borrow money to either go and invest that money or to stay solvent, uh, stay liquid. They're going to have a hard time. And so this is the only thing, in my opinion, that's keeping most of these banks open right now is the Fed's repo window. Now, the Federal Reserve has been very clear about saying that they are not going to tell you who they're helping 
And the reason why is because, quite frankly, you'd panic. If you found out, and type one below, if you found out that your bank needed a lifeline from the Fed just to keep its doors open, would you exit that bank or at least go get a second bank? Would type one if that would be your, your reaction. Type two if, nah, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because the Fed's always going to be there. Now, here's the problem with that thinking, because I believe the first is true, that one is true. If the Fed is always going to be here, you have to realize every time that they take on bad assets, they need some collateral, right? So the banks that need money, need liquidity, they have to put up something as assets. The Federal Reserve is printing money to give these banks to stay liquid, and then they're taking assets off their books. Probably more than not, they're taking bad assets. Well, that means the Fed's balance sheet's expanding. And you have to understand how big of a deal this is because the Federal Reserve is a private bank. It is not federal and it has no reserves. It is not a government entity. It is a horrible system, which what we have. When they give money and then they take these assets, that means their balance sheet expands. And they have to acknowledge this. They go and tell the government. They tell the public, right? As their balance sheet expands, other countries are watching them going, all right, they are printing money and they're taking on bad assets. The Federal Reserve knows this too, and they go, we don't want to be held to these assets. We want to sell them to someone's pension fund, hide them, put, rush them under the rug. And every time in the past, in the recent past, they've tried to do that, which is you know, quantitative tightening. They've tried to sell those assets into the market. The stock market can't, the market cannot absorb those bad assets. And it always turns negative when we find out that the Federal Reserve is selling a bunch of these assets. So you have to understand, and Jerome Powell made it very clear in his last remarks publicly, he said that they are going to look to aggressively sell down their uh, uh, balance sheet. That means they've got to get this stuff off their books. This is toxic. They don't want to be caught with these assets when the markets collapse. So this is why I wanted to bring you this, because is Citizens Bank going to be the next one? That's It's already been downgraded. It's already got issues with the Fed doing some shady stuff. It's stocks you know, down a third. They've just swapped out the CEO. Hey, my my hats off to Stacy because it's got to be rough. You know, you finally get to that position to to run a bank, and you're excited, especially a bank this size, and you're just left with a bunch of crap, and you've got to try and rally the troops. And you know, a lot of bankers have no concept of what's happening in the market because they're so head down. You know, they got the horse blinders on, and they're looking right ahead at their own stuff, and they're not looking over the uh, over the horizon. And quite frankly, most People working in banks have no concept of what we're talking about right now, uh, just the C-suite execs and you. And so it, this is really exciting. Every time I run into somebody banking uh, at higher level banks, and I've got one, one bank uh, board member contacting me the other day and said that they just bought a ton of gold uh, and put a certain amount of their reserves in gold. They're like, hey, this is Basel Three Tier 1 assets. We're going to do it because the ninja said. And it's really exciting to talk to some of these uh, bank presidents, the board members, of how they can firm up their balance sheet and not be in the same trouble as these bigger banks. I got to say, this is quite an exciting time to live in. So I hope you guys are getting ready. Uh, let's see if Citizens is next. If you have any information on Citizens, put it down below, um, or you guys know how to get a hold of me in the email. All right, we'll talk to you later. The Economic Ninja is out.